Hello, my name is Nick Sousen. I'm going to be discussing racial disparities in the management of pediatric trauma. My co-authors and I have no disclosures. Pediatric trauma is a leading cause of children's emergency department visits, as well as deaths. There is a substantial amount of research that has found disparities in health outcomes for black, indigenous, and people of color in America today. Previous research has demonstrated disparities in pediatric trauma. Our study set out to review the data from our trauma center to explore the epidemiology of pediatric trauma in our community and to determine whether there are racial disparities in traumatic injuries in our pediatric population. Methods. This is a retrospective review of trauma registry data of an urban academic level one adult trauma center that serves the greater New Orleans metropolitan area and its surroundings. The study included children between the ages of zero and 17 years presenting between January 1st, 2012 and December 31st, 2017 with a mechanism of injury meeting criteria for a level one trauma activation. Racial designation was self-assigned by family or caregivers. All statistical analyses were carried out in a statistical package known as SAS version 9.4. Fisher's exact or Pearson chi-square tests were used to assess the associations between race and categorical variables. Non-parametric Kruskal-Wallis test is utilized to assess racial differences in continuous variables. Now, let's look at the results. 989 pediatric trauma patients were evaluated in this cohort. 71% of the children were black, 24% were white, and 5% were Asian, Hispanic, or other racial designation. There were five children for whom a racial designation was not obtained. This is in comparison to 2010 census data that showed that the city of New Orleans was 60% black, 34% white, and the remaining 6% were Asian, American Indian, Hispanic, or two or more races. It is important to note that our data set reported the primary racial designation of each patient. As such, there is likely an underreporting of the Hispanic population as this designation was not separately asked to all within this cohort. Here we see that the majority of the cohort was male at 73%. The majority of the black and white children were male as well. However, there is a statistically significant difference compared to the Asian, Hispanic, and other children. There were significantly more females involved at 51%. There was a significant difference in age across racial groups. Black and white children were older. Black children had a mean age of 11.9 years old and a median age of 14 years old. White children had a mean age of 11.3 years and a median age of 14 years old. Whereas the Asian, Hispanic, and other racial group was significantly younger with a mean age of 8.3 years old and a median age of seven years. In this slide, we look at mechanism of injury across our three racial groups. The mechanism of injury is broken down into blunt versus penetrating trauma. Our null hypothesis was that injury class rates would be the same across the three racial groups. However, our results find that the rates are not the same across the racial groups. 11% of white children and 13% of Asian, Hispanic, and other children had a penetrating injury while 54% of the black children in our cohort had a penetrating injury. Modeling revealed that sustaining a penetrating injury was a significant factor in predicting death as an outcome, with an odds ratio of 1.97, with 95% confidence interval of 1.11 to 3.49. This finding of increased penetrating trauma affecting black children led us to further investigate the underlying mechanism of injury. Of the 408 penetrating trauma cases, 340 were found to be gun-related injuries. In this subset, 93.5% of those injured were black children. Being a black child was a significant risk factor for sustaining a gun-related injury. Modeling revealed that in comparison to white children, the odds of gun-related injury is nearly 11 times greater for black children. A non-significant trend emerged for Asian, Hispanic, and other children with odds of 2.4 compared to white children. Males had nearly double the odds of sustaining a gun-related injury in comparison to females. Children sustaining a gun-related injury were older than children not sustaining a gun-related injury. In modeling, each year of age increased the odds of gun-related injury. Here we investigate types of transport to the trauma center across three racial groups. Transport is divided into three groups, ground ambulance, air ambulance, and other, which includes presenting with family, friends, 
self, police, or other means. The majority of children arrived via ground ambulance. Significant difference in the number of white children that presented via air ambulance. But there is also a significant difference in the number of white children that reside in rural areas outside of the metropolitan area. There is also an increased number of black children presenting by other means than ambulance. However, this was a non-significant trend. There was a significant difference in the rates of surgery across the three racial groups, with more black and white children requiring surgery in comparison to their Asian, Hispanic, and other counterparts. White children had longer mean and median hospital stays. Modeling showed that each additional day of hospitalization decreased odds of death. It further revealed that increased length of stay was correlated with increasing age, blunt trauma, presentation by air ambulance, and surgical intervention. Here, we look at the disposition from the emergency department of children with trauma across our three racial groups. Fewer white children were discharged from the ED, more were admitted to the ICU, and a higher percentage were transferred to another facility, which was most commonly a pediatric hospital. Notably, there were fewer white children that died in the emergency department. In the next slides, we will examine survival of children presenting with trauma to our facility. 7% of children died as a result of the trauma they sustained. There was not a significant difference across racial groups. However, the mortality rate is higher in our cohort in comparison to national averages. Looking further at outcome, children who sustained a gun-related injury had a significantly higher number of deaths compared to children who did not sustain a gun-related injury. There is a high burden of trauma affecting children in our community. Black children sustained more penetrating injuries with particular disparities in gun-related injuries. These injuries increased risk of death for these children. White and Asian, Hispanic, and other children had more blunt trauma, while white and black children required more surgery. The longer stays of white children may be indicative more severe trauma or may be a marker of implicit bias. Further research into injury severity scores will help better understand possible disparities. The equity in survival indicates that similar life-saving interventions are received by all groups during hospitalization. Given the high mortality rate, quality improvement interventions in pediatric trauma care will further ensure health care equity for all groups. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I'll close with a quote from James Baldwin. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced.